Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Thanksgiving if you guys are watching when this video comes out. We got a lot of updates for you today, some updates on the property, what we're doing with it out here. A lot of information on videos coming up soon. I need some advice on projects too, so stick around. A quick reminder, if you do enjoy the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit subscribe to see more tractor videos, and if you want something for your tractor, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Okay, first things first, a little bit of business. Our buddy Justin over there at 511 Grill Guards, he is running a special for Black Friday the whole weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you use discount code GWTBF for Black Friday, GWTBF. You're gonna get 10% off instead of the usual 5%, those three days only. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's gonna be this black insert that's here. They have them in green as well. You can get it for Kubota tractors, John Deere tractors, a lot of different models. You just bolt it on, you can do it in an hour or so. It's really easy to do, but you might be able to see this dent that's down here. It already saved our grill one time, plus it looks pretty cool too. Again, that's GWTBF, 10% off, this weekend only the, what is it, 26th through 28th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 2021. So if you're watching this in the future, this is a reason why you should subscribe to the channel. Sometimes you're gonna have those limited time only opportunities. Okay, so like everybody in the US, probably the world, we are dealing with inflation. So we've been looking for property for a long time. We've been talking to builders, getting numbers for a long time as well, just to have general price points, you know, and, and be educated so we know what we're getting into, can put together an entire budget to build, well, to buy the land, to build the house, to put a barn up, to put a pool in, to do all the stuff that we want to do, right? And so that was the point when we bought this land. We had numbers in mind from builders, good ballpark numbers that they were relatively comfortable with within 10, 15% either way. And that was in the spring, right? Just six, seven months ago. And we bought this land shortly after that, closed in at the end of June, and then really got serious with builders to try to pin these numbers down, get some firm quotes, get the process rolling. The house is supposed to be right where we're standing. You know, that's what we want to build. Well, here we are several months later and we've had firm numbers which have taken forever, forever to get from these builders and they've blown us away. Prices have gone up 40 to 50% from the spring when we had these rough figures, you know? And it's just tough to come to grips with, you know? Are we ever going to see that money back if we end up building new out here? And that's uh, for the barn, that's for the house, that's for, for anything. The prices are just sky high, you know? And so we actually took some time, hit pause, and went and tried to, <laughs> tried to find a house on the, the used market, you know, an existing home. We made some offers on houses actually, and lost out for one reason or another on everything we found. And now we're back to the idea of maybe building out here again and trying to come to grips with that reality. But this inflation is real, you know, just like all of these tractor attachments cost way more than they did a year or 18 months ago, there's certain attachments that are 50% more expensive mainly driven by the cost of steel, but there's other you know, transportation costs and labor costs and other, other things that are going into it as well. We are experiencing that same kind of situation on the development side. So I'm buying a building. It's not finalized yet. We are under contract. We're going through inspections. It's gonna be a little while before we can get moved in. And so there's still time for things to change and all fall apart if that's the way it's gonna end up. But it looks promising. It's about a 13,000 square foot building, a lot of warehouse space for us. It's got five acres with about three acres or so, maybe a little bit more that are already paved and lighted. We got to do a few things to, to make it exactly what we want, but it's going to be set up really well. And so that's going to be the new home of Good Works Tractors. And I tell you, we've outgrown our place, our current place over there in Kalamazoo. Well, we outgrew that a long time ago. So this has been a long time coming. I'm really excited. We'll have more information as soon as we know it's ours. Okay, now let's talk about some projects that are coming up out here at the property. And you know what? I could use some advice on a few different things. If you guys have links to videos or what to do or what to avoid or that kind of thing, let me know. So first I wanna put in two gun ranges out here, all right? so. I've shot at a lot of gun ranges. I've never installed my own, so I haven't really given it any thought as to what makes a good gun range. And we do have one area that's a natural fit for a pistol range. It's on the other side of the property. It was actually a bit of a gravel pit, and so it's not huge, right? But it's a, it's a depression that's down low, maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 feet already in the embankment that's cut around there. It needs some cleanup work, but I'd like to put a pistol range down there. It's just a natural location for it. So that area is already pretty well cleared out. It just needs some grading just to kind of really prep the surface. So that's going to be more about 
how to really set it up right for a pistol range. The other area is going to be carving out a section in the woods for a bit of a longer range. I think I can get 200 yards out of this range, which for the shotguns and muzzle loaders, um, you know, the 22 long rifle with the kids, uh, the Bushmaster 450, the 350 Legend, all that kind of stuff will be really good for that. It's not going to be a five or a 600 yard range, which is going to be a little bit more challenging with all the hills and the diff different terrain changes I guess that we have out here. I still haven't figured out where to put that, but uh, this 200 yard range is, is in a, a valley in the woods that's got a natural backstop all the way around it, kind of away from everything else. So it's gonna do the least amount of bothering neighbors that are around the area too. So again, just looking for advice on what to consider. I gotta use the mulcher to get a lot of undergrowth cleared out, um, probably take down a few bigger trees as well, and then get to work on building the range the way that I want. Okay, so the next big project that I have to tackle and I've kind of been putting it off, I don't really, I don't really know what to do with it. So, you know, it's, it's putting a trail in that's kind of like this. So not really driving a truck so much. Maybe I'd like to get there at some point, but at least equipment, you know, uh, the UTV, the tractors, the, the skid steers, everything else. So getting through the woods, kind of like in, in forests like this, except for the fact that it's going up a really steep hill, all right? Like one of the steepest points in the property. And right now we're following the pond all the way around and it's just taking a lot of extra time to kind of go all the way north and then go west a little bit and then come all the way back south. So this is meant to be a shortcut just to get us up that hill and where we want to go without wasting all that extra time. I think it's a 60 foot rise and not over much run. Um, boy, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred foot of run. I don't know what that equates to, but the point is it's a very steep hill, whatever that comes out to, I don't know. I don't know if the Mini X can handle that with kind of digging into the hillside and kind of, it's too, it's not enough space to switch back, I guess is what I'm saying. I, I don't know what to do with it. So it's a very steep hillside. Maybe I have to get a dozer in here and just do a lot of work and clear out way more trees than I think, but um, I'm not looking forward to that one. So I need more confidence on tackling this project. So if you have advice on how to handle cutting in a road into a steep hillside or videos to share or something else I should do. I want to try to tackle it myself. I don't want to hire it out. I got all the equipment. Well, I have a lot of the equipment. I can always rent more if I need to, but I want to give it a shot. I just, I don't know where to start. Okay, now a little insight on a lot of videos that we have planned, or at least in the planning phase over the next couple of months. So you see all these trailers here behind me. I want to give you guys a comparison between different trailer styles and considerations and what we use them for and why we have them and do we need all of them and that kind of thing, you know? So whether it's for this trailer video or anything else that we're gonna talk about, you know, if you wanna have a question answered, if you have something to add to it that you think would be of value, now is the time to let me know about that. So that way, when we're actually shooting the video, we can incorporate it and try to get that out to everybody else. And so the best way to communicate that to me is to leave a comment down below. Okay, so I've been getting some requests on the videos and uh, through email and, and Facebook too, just about my thoughts on the different pieces of equipment that have kind of randomly showed up uh, in videos and in posts and pictures and that kind of thing too. So I don't really know what you guys want to know about this kind of equipment. Um, if you just want to hear my feedback on it or if there's something in particular that I can share with you to help you make a better decision. I'm not a Polaris or a Can-Am or a Gator dealer. You know, I don't sell any of this stuff, but we use it out here at the property. I do have a Polaris uh, Ranger North Star, uh, a two row, you know, with the HVAC cab and everything on order. We ordered that back in August and they're saying it's gonna be January to March sometime before it shows up. Um, so anyway, if I can help you out with anything on, on performance, we've done a lot of video on the Gator in particular, but um, I love this Can-Am, you know, so we, well, when it's nice out, I use this all the time. It's a lot of fun to use, way peppier than the Gator. But if I can give you some helpful information on, on the different pieces of equipment, let me know. I can put together a video and help you out. Okay, we're also going to sprinkle in some new products that we've uh, that we've got around here. So Muds Custom sent over their uh, their quick change uh, for the bucket, the backhoe buckets, like on the 1025R. Uh, fits a couple others as well, but pretty sweet. So it's going to take a lot of that pain out of that process of switching out buckets. If you do have multiple buckets, Outback Wrap sent over a lot of different sizes of their protector, their sleeves that they have. Uh, you can put a lot of hydraulic hoses in here so you can organize them. You have different sizes. These are some smaller ones, 13 16 5 8 oh what's this, one and a quarter, and then whatever this mega one is here. This is the hose boss it's called, so I don't even know what diameter this one is. But the point being that's an easy way to just take a a gaggle or a, a, a disarrayed mess of hydraulic hoses and organize them, protect them, keep them nice and clean, and 
I don't know, make your tractor look a little better too. And I don't have it out here, but uh, we do have a new kit, a third function kit from Summit Hydraulics to install on a Kubota BX. I've actually had a Kubota BX 23S sitting at my shop for six months now. And um, you know, it had a lot of leaks and some other things going on and it was in and out of service a couple of times and kind of lost a little bit of steam there on wanting to get some projects done with it. But we're gonna get a third function kit installed on there, show you what that's all about. So with Muds Customs, with Outback Wrap, with Summit, those are all Discount Club members. So you use code GWT, you get your savings, you buy right on their website. Oh, and then we got this as well, which we have no power out here at the property right now, a vacant piece of land. And so this is a, uh, a trickle charger that I got for the dump trailer, right? So I am um, highly concerned about that battery draining down. And so I'm gonna see how this works. I don't know what you guys use. This is a pretty big uh, solar charger here, but a lot of good reviews on Amazon. If you guys have a different way without power out here on how to keep things charged, let me know. I thought about a generator too, but I think this trickle charger could work well for the dump trailer battery, could work well for the tractor batteries too if we need to but I don't know, we'll see. Okay, we are getting closer to having the Yapa up and running. Again, this is a PTO driven, so you hook it up to your, your tractor, drive it off the rear PTO, firewood processor. We had the log rack assembled. Well, we gotta find a whole good spot to get everything set up for the whole kit and caboodle with the processor, the log rack, a place to store everything, you know. I think we're gonna feed it into the dump trailer and then move everything where we want to from there. But there's just a ton of good firewood channels out there, you know, uh, Hometown Acres, Ohio Wood Burner, uh, Outdoors with the Morgans. I mean, the list just goes on and on. GP Outdoors is a lot of good videos too. Um, but we're gonna learn a lot <laughs> once we get into it. So this is one of the things, I have no shortage of watching videos and seeing how it's done, but actually starting to tackle this process for myself, there's still gonna be a learning curve. So Bob Nelson from Metsa Machines, uh, the US distributor, is gonna be coming over here uh, shortly after Thanksgiving. We've had to postpone it, a few things going on, but I'm hoping he can give me the rundown on how this thing all operates and, and uh, walk you guys through it, all the features. I'm really, really excited, but we've gotta cut some trees down in the meantime. So gonna be a good excuse to put the chainsaw to work. Okay, so another educational video I'm hoping to put together is comparing different blades. So you have rear blades, which are like a flat blade, okay? And then you have your box blades, pretty self-explanatory. Then you're gonna have your land planes or land levelers, they're called. So there's gonna be pros and cons to all of those. The one that I struggle with the most is the rear blade. And while it is the cheapest, I feel like there's not really an application where I would want to use a rear blade over a box blade or a land plane. I'm sure it exists out there, I just can't really think of it. So for those of you that do favor a rear blade or have a good application for a rear blade, this would be a good time to let me know about that. That way, when I create this video comparing all three different types of attachments, I can include that there and make it the most beneficial and helpful for the viewers watching. Oh, I did think of one more video we're gonna have coming up. I'm gonna get the Manitou, the big telehandler uh, out here at the property. It's got a big old yard and a half bucket on there. I think it's a yard and a half. And we've got all sorts of piles of topsoil that you may have seen around here. And we're gonna scoop all those up, probably put them in the dump trailer, at least consolidate them for now and, and get them somewhere. So they're just, they're driving me nuts with all these piles all over the place. So watch for that video in the future too. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up today. And um, as a resident of Michigan, I feel I'm obliged to say this, although part of me really doesn't want to, but go Lions. And if you did enjoy today's video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button to see more. And if you want something for your tractor, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. So thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by and happy Thanksgiving.